International trade have always been worked in weird ways, especially in history. Throughout the time, there were always a product in high demands, and selling these products and providing it to the people would be a lucrative investment for you. In history, there were always some typical luxury goods that were high in demands, like gold, ivory, velvet, and most importantly, silk. Silk was the prestige of the medieval world. More you had, the more respect you would see. It was a very expensive material because of its rare production. Silk was produced in very few places on earth during the medieval ages, mostly in China. Romans called Chinese as serans, deriving from Greek word serika, meaning silk. China would produce the silk and carry it throughout the world, mostly from the trade route that has formed over the years, called the Silk Road. Silk Road would start from China and the caravans would pass through the Central Asian steppes and to Persia. From Persia, the silk would come to Middle East, and from the ports there, it would spread to Europe, but mostly to the Eastern Roman Empire. All of Europe would have the need for silk, but the city of Constantinople was the highest consumer of silk, but it was way too expensive for all the people to use it, so it was only the royal family and the very wealthy aristocrats that used silk. The price of silk was high, mostly because the Persians were being the middleman between the silk of China and the rest of the world. Persians profited from the silk trade thanks to their geopolitical location. Whenever the Roman and Persian relations soured, not being able to provide the silk that is demanded by the Romans and the Europeans was possible. During the reign of Justinian, the Eastern Roman Empire was expanding drastically. While they expanded, treasury had to spill the gold faster than usual. Emperor tried many ways to save and earn more money to keep up with the conquest and maintain the lands and the army. So they tried many ways to bypass Persians to acquire silk from China, but whatever route they tried, it would never meet the demands in the cities. You may think, then why didn't Romans produce the silk in their own lands? After all, they had a very large empire and they were rich enough to maintain a silk production. Well, the Chinese were so strict about the silk and its production. If anyone tried to take the silkworms that were used to produce the silk out of the country, they would be punished by death. The solution to save money from the treasury came from an unexpected place. To save the empire's treasury, two Christian monks came with an offer to the emperor. They claimed that they could bypass Persia, travel all the way to China and bring the silk production to the imperial lands, saving the empire from the Chinese silk monopoly. Emperor realized that producing silk in the imperial lands would mean filling up the Roman treasury whilst draining the Persian treasury. A golden opportunity for Emperor Justinian. He agreed without hesitation. Two monks went on their journey. For two years, they tried to reach the China in secrecy, avoiding the Persian lands, traveling through the Central Asian steppes. When they reached China, they managed to successfully smuggle the silkworms out from the China. They kept and hid the silkworm eggs in bamboo canes and ventured back to the Eastern Roman Empire. The mission was a success. With the arrival of the key aspect of the silk production to imperial lands, the emperor immediately sought to build the facilities to produce the silk. In the capital city of Constantinople, Antioch, Tyre, Thebes, Beirut began the production of much needed silk. The mulberry leaves for the silkworms were transported from the certain locations of the empire, many of which gained popularity. The Peloponnese, also later known as Morea, means mulberry, which grew in the region. The Chinese monopoly over the silk production may have been come to an end, but that didn't mean it affected the Silk Road. The route continued to be one of the most busiest trade routes in the world. The silk that was passed to Europe from the Eastern Roman lands was the matter of prestige. In any church or palace in Europe, you would find the Eastern Roman silk that had been produced or brought from China.